So we had calculated that we would have 2.42 amps, but in actuality, we only have 0.36, which means that Ohm's law is not a liar. We have some resistance that's showing up somewhere, and that resistance is what we call inductive reactance. Hey, thanks for watching this video, which is about inductive reactants and really impedance, impedance being total resistance, inductive reactants, and, and typical measured ohms resistance that we can measure in a resistive load. So it's really the effects of resistive loads and inductive loads together and how that all works out. Without being overly complicated, what this comes down to is that Ohm's law gets a little complicated when you're working with magnetic loads. And so a load is an electrical device that does something. So a motor is a load or a light bulb is a load. It's the part that actually does something in a circuit. And so with something simple like a oven coil, for example, that is a resistive load or a light bulb is a resistive load. Even those can be difficult to apply Ohm's law. For example, with a light bulb, once that filament heats up, which is usually tungsten, once that fi tungsten filament heats up, the resistance in that filament actually increases quite a bit. And so what you measure with an Ohm meter and try to work Ohm's law beforehand doesn't really work in practice. And with inductive loads, it's even more extreme. And so I'm going to demonstrate why you can't just take an ohm measurement, use Ohm's law, and figure out what the amperage will be. Okay, so let's look at some inductive and one resistive load here and show kind of what the difference is. So first off, let's identify what these are. This is a 9340 relay. It has a magnetic coil. This is a typical 40 amp compressor contactor. It has a magnetic coil, and this is a stack sequencer, and a stack sequencer uses bimetallic disks. A lot of people call them thermo disks. They're actually two dissimilar metals um, that have different expansion and contraction rates. So basically, if you imagine them, kind of, they kind of pop up in place, and so they make or break the switches using these thermo disks. But rather than a magnet, there's actually just a little heater down here in the bottom. In fact, when you energize it, you can actually feel a little bit of that heat as the heat travels up into the sequencer. It causes causes these uh, thermo disks, these snap action disks to activate and deactivate, open and close. So because this is a resistive load, it's going to function much more closely to Ohm's law based on the resistance that I can measure on a meter than the other relays that use magnetic coils will. And I'm going to show you how that works. So first off, we're expecting everything to behave according to E equals I times R. I like this little directors thing here. E equals I times R is volts equals amps times ohms. And so we're going to start by measuring the ohms on all three. And we're going to keep a little tally here on the side so you can remember it easily. We're going to put this on ohm scale. So we've got the meter on ohm scale. And our relay coil is... This beeping noise is kind of annoying. So our relay coil is 18.3 ohms. So relay coil, 18.3 ohms. Contactor coil, let's see what we get here. 11.7 ohms, so we would expect this to draw slightly more amperage. 11.7, and then our heat sequencer. Wow, that really went up. So now we have 68.6. So we have 68.6, we have 11.7, Eighteen point three. Okay, so we work Ohm's law. Ohm's law is going to be pretty easy in this calculation. First thing we need to do, though, is we need to actually measure what our voltage is, so that way we can plug that in. So I'm going to put my meter in here, voltmeter. See what our applied voltage is. So thirty-eight point three or twenty-eight point three, I should say. So I'm going to take. The volts part and replace that with 28.3. So this 28 hi hey equals amps times resistance. So all we have to do now is take these three numbers 18.3 for the relay, 11.7 for the contactor, and 68.6 for the heat sequencer, plug them into this equation, and that should tell us what our resistances should be. So we got our calculator here. We're going to start with our, well, we'll start with our heat sequencer. So we'll take 28.3, we're going to divide that by 68.6 equals 0.4, what's it, 0.41, we'll say. Okay, so we'll write that down here, 0.41, that's our sequencer. The 11.7 is our contactor, so we're going to take 28.3 
divided by 11.7, 2.42, we're gonna round up, 2.42 amps. You're probably noticing that seems a little high. And we'll take our relay, 28.3 divided by our ohms, 18.3 equals 1. Point, we'll say 1.55, round up, 1.55. All right, so these are, this is our resistances up here. 68.6, 11.7, 18.3. We know our volts are 28.3. This is our formula, E equals I times R, or some people prefer V equals A times R. So it's volts, amps, resistance. Based on our calculations, our amps for our relay should be 1.55, for our contactor should be 2.42, and for our resistive load, which is our heater on our little stack sequencer, should be 0.41. So let's see what we actually get. Start with the contactor that shows that it was supposed to be the highest of all of them at point or 2.42. I'm just gonna plug it into the coil. This is our electromagnetic coil that I'm plugging into on both sides to a 24 volt transformer. I'm gonna flip the switch on. You heard the contactor pull in, and our amps are only 0.36 amps, which means that if we do the calculation, that means that we have an effective resistance that's quite a bit different than what we thought. So we had calculated that we would have 2.42 amps, but in actuality, we only have 0.36, which means that Ohm's law is not a liar. We have some resistance that's showing up somewhere, and that resistance is what we call inductive reactance. So I can actually tell you what the total circuit impedance is. All I have to do is plug in what the actual amperage is, so that is actually 0.36. So if we know that our voltage is 28.3 and we know that our actual amperage is 0.36, 28.3, that's our voltage. We divide it by our actual amperage, which is 0.36, and that gives us what our true circuit ohms are, and that would be an impedance. Impedance is the combination of both the resistive ohms that you can measure with a meter while it's static, plus the inductive reactance that occurs within an electromagnet due to the expanding and collapsing electrical fields. I'm not going to explain it any more than that, but just recognize with an electromagnet, you get this additional resistance that only shows up once you energize the load. Now let's try the relay, see what we get, just for giggles. So the relay is also an electromagnet, so inductive reactance comes into play, and now you can see we have 0.39 amps when we anticipated we would have 1.55 based on just doing the math of Ohm's law. So again, Ohm's law is not broken. It's just that you can't, on a electromagnet, you can't measure that resistance beforehand and expect it to stay the same. And even in a resistive load, there is some variance as the resistor heats up. It's not going to be exactly the same either, but let's see if we're closer or not. Now, on the stack sequencer, which uses a heater, we're expecting it to be 0.41, and let's see what we get. So we can see, initially it jumped up a little bit higher, but now that amperage is diving quite a bit. Something about that resistor that's in there caused that resist that amperage to be a little bit higher at first, but now it's diving down, and that, that amperage is actually even going below the target that we thought we would get. But as you can see, this is much closer to what we expected than what we got when we were doing it with the inductive load. So because now it's heated up, the resistance of that heater inside our stack sequencer is actually now even greater than what it was before, and so we're even seeing a little bit lower amperage um, due to the properties of the metal that's used in that heater. And so it varies a little bit, even with resistive loads, as those resistors heat up and cool down. But what you will notice is that we're just much closer to that target that we thought we would be, and it continues to drop as that heater warms up even further. In the case of a resistive load, all of the resistance comes from the resistor itself directly. In an inductive load, which just means magnetic, like a motor, a compressor, the coil on a relay, anything that uses magnetics, you can't directly just measure the ohms, use Ohm's law and figure out what it's gonna be. You have to know what effect inductive reactants will have on that electromagnet.